Welcome back to the Focus Forge podcast. Change the name, baby. It's been a minute. This is episode number 11. Um, the reason why we changed the name of the podcast is because the Focus Forge pre-launch is live. Now, the Focus Forge is something we've been working on for the better part of a year. Um, it's a mindset training program, but it's also a massive community to go along with it. There are going to be so many features in it that we are so fired up about. Um, we invested with a multi-million dollar company that are helping us build something that no one in this space has, that, that no one can offer. And we are so excited about it. So we changed the name from the Peak State Podcast to the Focus Force Podcast. So today, number 11, episode number 11, we're gonna dive into mindset and we're just gonna have some fun with it. We're gonna you know, talk about what's on our minds. There's a lot on our minds right now, um, building, this, building this program and we're just going to lay it out there for you guys. So how about you get us started? Yeah. Uh, to start with, you mentioned the platform. Mm -hmm. We partnered with a group out West that's like a legitimate tech company. Mm -hmm. This isn't just a bunch of videos, you know, on some basic member site. Like this thing is real. Mm -hmm. We invested a ton of time creating the program, but also a ton of money to make sure that this thing was modern real mm. interactive you guys are going to shit when you see this thing <laughs> there is nothing like it mm -hmm. have you seen anything like it no definitely not there's leaderboards you're going to have your own account we're going to have a big chat in it that's open 24 7 we're going to be dialed into it with you guys you have questions about certain concepts certain philosophies that we talk about we're going to dive into that with you you can post videos dude it's it's unreal we have it's it's badass. It's awesome. Imag imagine a place for baseball players. This is how it started, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine a place where baseball players could go and like speak freely, get vulnerable about what's really going on inside of them because baseball does not allow that, mm -hmm. right? You cannot get vulnerable ever. So um, that was the, the whole idea was a place for guys to go and get built back up, be honest. Mm -hmm. It's basically a mastermind, right? They say that we as people become like the average of the, of the people around us. Well, with this program, that program's going to be, that community is going to be one of your five. That's really mm -hmm. what we were thinking when we made the thing. Yeah. It's going to be a, a cool place, a great resource. That is exactly why we started it. Because, you know, when I started posting on social media a little over a year ago, I was telling you, man, like, it's just guys are getting beat into the ground. They're getting fucking beat to, ripped to shreds everywhere they go. And they, they have no place besides home where, you know, they can talk to their parents about what's going on. But unfortunately, bias is a real thing. You know, parents are just as emotionally invested as their kids, if not more. So, yes, parents are a phenomenal resource. You've taught me everything I know, which is I'm incredibly grateful for. But sometimes we need people that have a different perspective that are detached from our situation, our outcome, to really help us move forward and reach the most potential we've got. And that's why we made this thing. And so if you, want, if you guys want access to it, pre-launch is live. So what does the pre-launch mean? It means that we are opening up enrollment, registration, for just a quarter of the price. It's cheap, giving you guys an opportunity to invest in us, um, get in early. Um, and while, while it's being built. While it's being built and save you guys a bunch of money. So, yeah. yeah, obviously we did this because mindset is important. And there's this idea going around that the only way to truly find confidence is by working harder than everybody else. Now, yeah. <sighs> Yes, working hard is necessary. It's a fucking non-negotiable. You have to work hard to be good at anything in life. Nobody gets anywhere by just thinking that, that they can just, you know, fake their way through it. That's, that's really not how it works. What we're doing is giving you the tools to leverage your mind, to build off of that work you've put in, so that when it's time to go, man, you've got the right tools and the right filters readily available for you to be like, you know what? You know, I'm going to find confidence right now. I'm going to find certainty right now. Because that's what it's all about. You can work your ass off and still lack confidence. That's what we get in our DMs every single day. We all, we all know that guy that swings two hours a day, even like when baseball's not here right now. It's not going to be here for a while. This guy outworks everybody. 
And then he gets out in the spring when game starts, and he can't hit a lick. That guy is outworking literally everyone, right? And he still can't hit because we can go and take a bunch of action over and over and over. But if the belief isn't there, nothing's going to change. Confidence is a feeling. And yes, being physically prepared, that in itself is helpful. Because mm -hmm. feeling like you're unprepared is definitely not a good place to be. But working hard does not guarantee you confidence. No. If it did, then our DMs would not get blown up every single day with kids begging for more so that they can try to get back to that place where they once were. Because yeah. on college campus right now, with the overloaded rosters, with it being so cutthroat and so brutal, why build up if you're a coaching staff and you need guys to leave that don't work out? Why build those guys up? They don't. They don't even want to get emotionally invested in a kid that they're going to chase out of there. So it's not a real pleasant place for a lot of guys to be, especially mm -hmm. young guys. Yeah, it's frustrating, and I've been there firsthand. I mean, dude, I've been a part of teams that have 65 guys in the fall where we get morning weights four days a week getting ripped to shreds. I made a post about I, – I opened up about the issues I had at Baylor where – the strength coach had me leading that warm up and that speech impediment that I had growing up came back. And it got to the point when I was going out with my buddies, dude, I couldn't talk. I couldn't, I couldn't get words out. And it was something that I thought I had that was long gone in the past, you know, but because I let that shit get to me, because I let, I was just viewing myself choking over and over and over again at night, couldn't even eat dinner the night before because I was shitting myself. So many guys find themselves there, and it might not even be to that level. A lot of guys do, but it, it doesn't need to be that way, and it shouldn't be that way. No, that story, when, when you tell that story, I'm your father, I fucking see red that somebody did that. Mm -hmm. I mean, why? Why? I mean, really? Ride a kid like that? I mean, just put a saddle on your back and ride you like a goddamn jockey. Yeah. It's bullshit. Why? I mean, really, why? Why do that? Yeah, he, uh, he was something, man. He was something. He, he left, actually, after the fall. So in the spring, he got a job at a different Division I for a different sport. And he, like, said goodbye to all of us. And I was like, mm. yeah, no thanks. Point is, though, that's why we've built what we've built and why we're building what we're building, because... Even though what that guy did was just egotistical and fucking ridiculous, I shouldn't have let it get to that point internally. You know, like there is some, there's something so powerful on relying on your, it's your responsibility to take control of your state, no matter what the hell's going on around you. That's not just a part of baseball. It's, it's a part of being a man. You know, so that's something that you've instilled in me since I was a little kid. I might've lost it for a while, but I sure as hell found my way back. So it doesn't matter what you're going through, man. It's, it is on you. And I, I just want to make that clear. Although that story is pretty, pretty fucked. Yeah. I still want to make that clear. Yeah. I, I'd say 99% of the people, their state, state of mind, state of body, rises and falls with life, with what's going on. External factors. And it doesn't have to be. Mm -mm. I mean, we, we are battling hardwiring. You knew how to control your state. It had been pounded into you from an early age, right? And you lost it entirely because we all lose it entirely at times because we're battling this survival mechanism that's literally hardwired into our brains. I, I read in a book recently that the, the amygdala, the part of the brain that, that hardwiring lies, it takes in nine negative inputs, negative ones, to every one positive. So our brain's constantly searching, looking for trouble, looking for problems. And we have to work our asses off because every time we have one negative thought, it gets into our bodies, it 
kills our problem solving. It slows our reaction time. I mean, there's a price that we pay. And there was another study. It was, it's called the positivity ratio. We have to engage in three positive self-talk messages just to get back to our baseline level after one negative one. So our brain's searching for trouble, negative, negative, negative. It finds it because there's always something negative. It gets into us. It hurts us. We have to have three positive thoughts just to get back to like good. That's why you lost. That's why you lost it at mm -hmm. Baylor. Yeah. Because that's what we're battling. Mm -hmm. But we now know that it doesn't have to be that way. And that's a much better way to live. Oh, hundred percent. God, it's just a different world. It really is. And we've been doing this a long time, but we both still fall at times. Oh, we yeah. fail, but then we recognize it fast and we get back on it. Yeah. And we want to just jump into a group, into a place, into a community and teach that and be in it together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To me, it's, I can't wait. I know it's, it's exciting. You know, something happened today that I didn't think I was going to talk about. Um, but I was driving to the gym this morning and I had a morning where I just had a hard time controlling my state, right? We had talked about it this morning, a lot of things going on in the background. So when I'm, when I'm driving, that's kind of in my head a little bit, right? I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. And I look and there is somebody in my blind spot when I'm driving on Veterans Parkway and I go to turn, I'm switching lanes and I recognize it at the last second. And it has my heart beaten a million miles an hour. And then I thought to myself, imagine if I would have hit that guy. You know, like imagine if I would have just gotten in an accident right there. There's a freaking baby in the back seat, mm. you know? Yeah. But like, and then I think back to what I'm, what I'm letting bother me right now. And it, it just went away, dude. It, it went away. Sometimes, you know, just a, just a simple shift in perspective like that is all it takes to make a massive change in our state. And I, I, was, I was kicking myself. I was laughing to myself. Literally, I'm like, dude, like, come on, you know? But not everybody has those filters to run everything through. Some people would find that and be like, oh, think about how much worse my day would have gotten right there. And they would have gone right back to that old programming, that old hardwiring of, oh, everything's just so shitty. Everything's so wrong. The lens we see life through is going to dictate how we feel, right? And it's just just a little side note there. That happened to me this morning, and I was just, it's just interesting. Yeah, but that's advanced mindset right mm -hmm. there. That is the result of all the stuff we've been doing, the time that you've put into it. You have dedicated your life to mastering your state, and you were able to immediately find context as opposed to falling into the fear, oh no, terrible, letting it consume you. Because when you noticed it and you had that horrible feeling that jumps in, that's our brain releasing fight or flight chemicals. Mm -hmm. Once that thing is released, there's so much energy in there that it's pretty hard to recover from that. Now, it doesn't so much matter in that environment, right? But think if you're a kid that just got into fight or flight at a showcase, when you're in the line to do your infield evaluation and you get into fight or flight, your hands now become stone. You're so sped up that you lose like all feel for reading hops. You forget to throw it. You know, you lose, you basically just lose your shit. Mm -hmm. you, see, I, you see it happening over and over. But there's that window of time, right? this tiny window of time, once that thing hits your brain, whether it's a thought, whether it's a, an accident like that, there's this tiny window before the brain triggers like an emotional response, of a feeling. If you can find your way to constantly be in that gap, you can shut that shit down. You can shut down the release of the fight or flight chemical. That's what we're doing here. Now that's advanced, that takes time. Mm -hmm. But if you can get in that gap and own that fucking gap, dude, you've got so much more control over what your brain is doing than anybody else, and you're playing a different game, man. It's a different game. Yeah.
yeah, it's, uh, but it takes work. Mm -hmm. It really does. It takes work. And a 90 second video on social media, it, it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. But is that going to get you in that gap to where you can control the gap? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It just takes more than that. There's a price. I mean, and although we are building this program, although you've dedicated decades to this, I've been I'm pretty deep into this as a 25 year old. Um, we're never finished with our own development. We're always going. We're always learning. We're always investing in ourselves. I mean, dude, you've you guys have invested thousands upon thousands of dollars in your own development. Hundreds of thousands there since we started this. Yeah, I mean, it's that's the one thing I want to make clear is this is a this program will help you in your baseball career, right? It'll, it'll help them in their career. No doubt about it. But I've learned now that I'm two or three years off of playing, this stuff has elevated me in my life outside of baseball more than I could even put into words. Like if, if you would have told me when I got in that car accident in 2020 that I would be where I am right now in life, I'd say you're fucking crazy. I was like, what? What do you mean? Because I was just at, at a certain point, every player has to sit down and ask themselves, what am I without baseball? You know, what am I without being able to go to the yard every single day you know, or have those set goals in mind or be able to go step in that box, those road trips? One day it's going to end. And build, d digging deep into your psychology now and just building this foundation is going to change your life outside of the game. And I just, there are no words to describe how grateful I am for it. Because, I mean, I don't want to sound boastful, but life is just so fucking good right now. And I, I could focus on shit that makes it miserable. You know what I mean? Yes. But it's up to us. And digging deep, it, there is a price to pay, but man, is it worth it. Yeah, learn, learning to, to control your focus, that is the thing. Because we're hit with like hundreds of thousands of messages on a daily basis, marketing messages, just stuff as we're on our phone. I mean, we are being flooded and our brain is being influenced by all those messages. And for most people, they end up in this place where life is happening to them. But with some shifts in focus, when you really figure out how to navigate, not only do you control your state, you can control how you feel, but we become creators of our circumstance, whereas most people are victims of circumstance. And dude, I'm sorry, that's magical. Mm -hmm. Nothing is impossible. But again, this is like the thing. So there's a price, right? Mm -hmm. We got to pay the price. Yeah. And there's, there's a reason why most people live lives of quiet desperation because they, they either don't have the resources don't know where to find it or they just see the idea of, you know, having to like do an honest self evaluation and, and dig into what's really going on. And they would just rather live in, rather live in what's comfortable and what's safe. And you know what? It might seem safe right now, but you will look back at whatever, at some point in your life and realize, Oh shit, I didn't live the way I really wanted to live. And it really, it sounds dramatic, but dude, there's no other way to put it. I mean, I look, I've done a lot of visualizing because I live alone, right? Me and my dog. I've done a lot of visualizing on what I think my life would have looked like if I wouldn't have taken this path, right? It's kind of like the uh, Dickens process, which we're going to dive into. Yeah. Go, right? What's that? Dickens process. What about it? That's what it's called, correct? I'm not messing yeah. up. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Just double checking. You know, and, and I visualize what my life would have looked like if I would have kept the same habits, the same beliefs, and I would have just kind of wrote it out. It hurt. It hurt. Yeah. And it, it's, I, don't, I don't like to think about that. No. But, but it's probably healthy. Yeah, but I did it with the right filters in mind, you know, yeah. with the right context, because I knew that I wasn't going to do that because I, I know the power of making a fucking decision for myself and keeping the promises I make to myself, yeah. you know? We're going to have you guys do that, just so we're clear. You guys will have to look... You know, in into the future, and it it'll hurt, but man, that pain and that fear of what life would be like if, if you don't make a change, 
It's powerful enough to make you fucking change anything in your life, anything in your career. Yeah, and we have our motivations for why we did this, right? Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about it. And we want to help guys that are in their career. But my real concern is for baseball players when they're done playing. Because baseball, the, as a culture, it breeds this too cool syndrome that makes guys feel like a fish out of water when they're no longer in that environment. And you're now suddenly out there like on your own. you got to make a living. You have to now fit in and find your way in this culture that's completely alien. And you've got this conditioning in your background that if you do anything that's vulnerable, if you do anything that's a little bit goofy, you get absolutely shredded <laughs> in a dugout, clubhouse, an apartment, anywhere, right? And that all works against you when you're done playing. It really does. It hurts guys. Mm -hmm. So I'm scared to death for guys when they're done playing. I, I really am. Baseball, uh, it's great in so many ways, but when you've got to now leave, it's a pretty uncomfortable process to leave because mm -hmm. it's just so different. It's a bunch of NARPs, right? Non-athletic, regular people <laughs> out there who say weird things and it's Shows, just a room full of people being weird, you know? Showing no feel. Zero feel, yeah. yeah. So that that's a big motivator for me is giving guys the tools to be bold and still attack and be yourself afterwards. Mm-hmm. Because the game, man, it's a that's a tiny window. We really only is. do that for a, a sh very short period of time. It's over like that. Yeah, you're right. When you when you're out in public, and even you know, obviously, when I got done playing, I didn't enter the quote real world. Right, I jumped into coaching college baseball for a bit, and then dove into this. So I didn't really experience that. And I pray to God I never, I won't ever experience that. I don't want to. What I, I don't want to work for anybody else and enter a, you know, which if you do that, that's fine. But that's just not my thing. Um, I was scared shitless. I was afraid of my own shadow. Yeah. I, I mean it. For starters, like I didn't, come, coming up, I didn't have a lot of models for financial success, like business, nothing like that. So I had to go out there and figure it out. And I found myself just... I was out of my mind most of the time, mm -hmm. just so uncomfortable. And I realized that, wow, I have like really limiting beliefs about who I could be after the game. But I started diving into personal development. A buddy of mine gave me a book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm -hmm. And that book rocked me. So I started down this path. And luckily I found that. But I feel for people who don't, because we were talking earlier, most people living lives of quiet desperation, they don't know that there's a different way. Mm -hmm. Even though there's so much information out there, still, this stuff isn't taught. It's not talked about in schools. It's not taught anywhere. But they don't know. So we're trying to get the word out. You know, mm -hmm. there is a better way. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that voice crack I just had right there? Yeah, it sounded like a thirteen-year-old boy yeah. going through it. Yeah, man, it's 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 pretty funny to like look back on the past. You know, almost it's been almost a year now of us. You know, with this idea, we had this vision that happened to align for both of us, right? And just seeing where we've progressed to and. Now we're to the point to where we can, you know, we've we've launched the pre-sale. It's just a, it's almost euphoric when I sit and think about it. The the work is just now beginning. You know, we've been working our asses off, but now it's it's go time. But it's just cool to see when you when you actually have a vision for what you think you can do, and you don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. You know what you're capable of. You know what you have to offer to the world, and you refuse to compromise on that, you can do fucking anything. I'm convinced. Yeah, when, you're in, when you learn to control your state, well, let's put it this way. When you're in a weak state, like little things can just destroy you. 
little things, like just stuff that seems so insignificant when you're in a powerful state. That stuff, the little things can become like these huge obstacles that just there's no way you can get around it. But when you're in a powerful state, even the biggest obstacles just seem like like temporary minor hiccups. Mm -hmm. That's learning to control your state. That's the other side of this mindset thing. But again, it's not taught. It's not talked about, which still I can't get my head around that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty evident in what I what seems to be the business world, right? Like it seems like these, which is why we are doing what we're doing, because nobody has really filtered this stuff down into a sports specific context, baseball context. That's why we're doing what we're doing. You know, but as I'm, you know, a lot of the studying that I do is in a different context, obviously, because no one else is offering it in what we're doing. And, you know, as I'm listening to it, it's, it's all about taking bold action, right? It's all about taking bold action, breaking down limiting beliefs, breaking down negative associations, and just refusing to fucking compromise, man. Like, that's the power to redirect your focus is so impactful in the game of baseball. But like you said, nobody's teaching it. The only mind stuff, mindset stuff out there is practice mindfulness. Uh, you know, just think positively. Um, you know, work as hard as you can so that you know in the back of your head that, you know, you deserve this, right? Yeah, nobody's outworking you. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like we said, that is powerful. You have to work hard. When I played, nobody fucking worked harder than me. No one worked harder than me. You were a little bit different and that you're actually evidence that it's not it's not always necessary. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I I outworked nobody. Mm -hmm. But I played as hard as anybody. Mm -hmm. And you could still I mean, you could still go out there and be a monster even though you haven't outworked anybody. Not that I'm recommending that, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's that earlier point we were talking about where hard work doesn't guarantee you confidence. Yeah. Confidence is a habit, you know. That's why we every single team has that one dude, one or two guys that go home for Christmas break and drink beer and party and and some might not do that, they might just sit and play video games all night and have a good time, you know. But when they come back in the spring, like dude, I haven't touched a bat in like 4 weeks and they just mash. And yeah. you get so frustrated. You're like, "What the hell is that?" That's belief. It's belief. That's, that's how strong the mindset is. You can be totally unprepared. But if you're cocked up and you are certain, you can still mash. Yeah. You can still smack somebody in darts even if you haven't played in 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the mind. Yeah. One point I want to bring up that kind of goes along with that point, when I got in the accident that first time, right? When I, or that, that, when I got in the accident and had that first surgery, it's like six or seven weeks post-op, um, and I just started swinging a bat the day before, right at practice, taking BP. Felt good, didn't have didn't have much pain, you know. But then again, I hadn't touched a bat in the better part of eight months, so I'm thinking I'm gonna I kind of work my way back into it. Well, my head guy comes up to me when I'm in the cage. It's like six in the morning before senior day, and he's like, he sees me hit, and he's like, "Hey, how you feeling? I'm like, good." He's like, "You want to go?" I'm like, "Huh?" He's like, "All right, you're starting at third senior day. And I'm like, a part of me was like, oh shit. Like, dude, I haven't, I haven't run. I haven't taken fungos. I haven't thrown, you know, like, yeah. But then there was that, that other part of me. It's like, dude, let's go. You've been preparing for this, maybe not physically, but mentally you've been seeing yourself killing it and mashing baseballs for six months. So you've put in the work, but it's a different kind of work. And then I went out there and I, I played my ass off. So that's evidence right there. I was weak. I was slow. You know, I wasn't nearly in the same physical shape that I normally am when I go out there and play competitive college baseball, but I had that belief. And I did that work through visualization and just having the right filters and tools that I relied on that day. And I went out there and did my thing, you know? That, that's advanced mindset. Yeah. That, that's what's possible. And the visualization piece is huge mm -hmm. it really is and it, there was a they did a study on that and it had to do with free throws i think it was at ucla mm -hmm. but they had the three groups 
the one, one group did nothing. They had the one group that just did the physical practice, shooting free throws every day. And then the other group didn't shoot free throws physically, but they saw it. They saw themselves. They, they forced these people to sit down and visualize to where in their minds, they're stepping up to the line with confidence. They feel just absolute certainty and they rehearsed it in their mind over and over and over. Who performed the best? Well, of course, I wouldn't mention it if it wasn't, <laughs> if it wasn't the group that visualized, mm -hmm. but they outperformed the guys who shot 100 free throws every single day. Mm -hmm. That's the power of visualization. But guys don't use it. Well, they do use it, but they use it when they're struggling to try to figure out why they're struggling. How did I miss that? And they visualize doing it terribly over and over and over. Mm -hmm. So 0 for 4 becomes 0 for 8 and then 0 for 12 and 1 for 16 because yeah. they're seeing it over and over. Yeah. Let's dive into what visualization really does. And we're going to be diving into this in the program heavily, right? When you're, when you're feeding your subconscious mind the outcomes you want, Right, you attach mass, massive feeling, massive emotion to you coming through in that moment. So you're you're creating this evidence and these outcomes in advance is, is what we call it. One thing that you've been doing a lot of work on recently, which is awesome, and I've I've been doing it too. After you recommended it, looking at like BMX and guys that are in just extreme winter sports, X Games, X Games, like Oof. these guys are doing shit that nobody. 20 years ago was thought was even humanly possible, right? And they're going up there, jumping over the Great Wall of, Tr Great Wall of China on a fucking skateboard with a broken leg. Bananas. Like, what, in order to really do that, whatever you're doing physically has to be a fully subconscious thing. Like, your subconscious has to take control. You can't think your way through things like that. Oh, no. I mean, these tricks, there's no way. They can't think at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and hitting, pitching, anything baseball-related, it's all subconscious. It's subconscious movement. So we're talking about mindset. How does mindset impact performance? Well, how does it impact it if it's subconscious, right? Well, because the only way that we can really reach the subconscious is through visualization. And the more we see it, and feel it at the same time, the positive, you know, the certainty, the smelling the hot dogs mm -hmm. in the big league stadium as you're, you know, just sticking your face on one and hammering one. The more we color that picture with emotion, the more likely our subconscious is going to grab it. And you said earlier, see it to a point where it becomes real. The subconscious doesn't know what's real and what's imagined. So through visualization, we can create outcomes in advance, feel them, and then subconscious will take it and run and make that happen. That's why they tell us, oh, you know, don't, don't envision bad things happening because they tend to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Like a guy standing over, you know, a little flipper wedge you can see the demons swirling over and over because he's thinking, oh, the last time I did this, I hosled it straight right. And what's he do? He fucking he thins it, hosles it, <laughs> rattles it off the cart, you know, straight 90 degrees right. Mm -hmm. That's the power, the subconscious. It, it's, it's a powerful thing, man. It is powerful. And I just, I can't wait to put this out there for these players because... I want these guys to imagine, right, they've got a perfect game event coming up or they're playing at Grand Park in front of college coaches, right, whatever. Summer started, had a good spring, and then it's, you know, a few days leading up to that event. These guys now know, after going through the program, how to use visualization to their advantage, how to just tap into their subconscious and feed the, their subconscious these outcomes in advance of killing it in the 60, getting a good jump, picking it clean, throwing a seat across the infield, and mashing baseballs. At that point, you've already done it multiple times. So when it's time to actually go and do your thing, dude, it becomes subconscious. It becomes something that your body, our bodies already know how to do everything it needs to in the game of baseball. 
But unfortunately, we let our, our conscious minds get in the way. So then when, it, when it's time to go, we start overthinking, oh, wait, I got to work on my, uh, you know, angle on my glove here. I got to make sure that I get, it right, get the right hop. We start, when we start thinking our way through it, we're done. We're done. It's death. We're out of, su- we're out of the subconscious. Mm-hmm. And now we're trying to steer the ship with our, with our conscious mind. And we're dog shit. It, it never works for anybody. No. We all, you've mentioned it before on this podcast, and I love it, and I've been studying it ever since. Hitting is a subconscious thing. That's why when you ask a guy who's, who just hit for the cycle or just, or just hit two jacks, went up to him like, dude, what are you doing different? What's his response? No like, idea, I don't dude. know. What pitch was that? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Why? Because the subconscious is steering the ship. And he's able to get, when we're flowing like that, we found a way to get out of our way to let the subconscious do what the subconscious does. That's the key. That's the whole goal of mindset is to get out of the damn way and just let that go be what it is. That's why mm-hmm. we always talk freedom, you know, certainty. Mm-hmm. But I love your uh, visualization piece for kids who are getting ready. You know, the college coach is coming or it's a big event or whatever. You've got an opportunity when you figure out how to visualize. You can engage in as many reps as you want. And when you're visualizing those reps and feeling them, you can have perfect reps. Think about going into Grand Park or wherever you're going, big perfect game event, where you've had a thousand reps that were perfect, where you felt it, heard it, smelled it. Mm -hmm. Is that an advantage? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a big advantage. While no everybody doubt. else is like, oh, I wonder if he's going to be here, and I wonder if this is going to happen, and yeah, those guys end up a puddle. Yep. You know, It's a great tool. Yeah, and you guys will have access to that very soon. Yeah. I don't care. We are, we are fucking proud of it, man. We're proud of it, and we're super excited to be able to you know, put it out for you guys. So we're going to wrap this thing up. Um, we are going to link in the description, both on YouTube and Spotify, the, uh, link to the pre-launch access, right? You can register. There's a, there's a video on there. There's a bunch of, you know, stuff as to what you're going to get in the program. Um, going to link it down below. Do us a favor. You guys have already given us some pretty good ratings on Spotify. We checked that out and that's really cool, man. We got over 35 star reviews. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Thank Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Please continue to support. Pre- we really appreciate it. It means more than y'all know. And we're excited to you know, be able to put this thing out for you guys very soon. Yep. Looking so. forward to it. Yep. Bye, y'all. Artlist.io.